I mean, we're not really in any danger because we have our parachute if, if we fall. I just forgot to activate it because I'm trying to figure this out. But that doesn't seem like... Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, our main goal is to finish our factory building for our steel production line. Um, so, yeah, and uh, we're also going to work on some milestones, and we're going to buy some stuff from the awesome shop. All right, let's do milestone stuff first, or at least get started with it. So, right now, uh, I've got um, uh, the gas mask stuff that's waiting uh, to load up and uh, so we need to grab that but I th there, there's supposed to be a way though that we can actually do multiple milestones at the same time um, the next one I want to do after gas mask is industrial manufacturing because then what we can do is we can set up a manufacturer to make uh, these heavy modular frames which we need for actually actually need for several things in fact we might even set up a permanent production line for that stuff I'm not I haven't decided yet um, but let's uh, let's get the the stuff we need first of all for the uh, for the gas mask so uh, we have been accumulating rubber and plastic from the last episode uh, so let's just grab a stack of that and uh, we don't need rubber oh yeah we do need rubber sorry uh, so let's grab some rubber too and I, I made a, some cloth in here, um, so we're just going to take all of that. And we'll use that, you know, too, for our updates. And then you are... Yeah, this is just some leftover um, biomass that I was using for the cloth. I'll probably turn that into solid biomass. But um, for the moment... Um, what do we got going on in these guys? Let's just store our cloth in here except for that we do need 50 for this update all right so let's throw all of this stuff in but before we press the button I think we can also go here and load this one up all right so they're gonna need uh, 200 plastic 200 rubber a thousand cable and a hundred motors. All right, so let's go grab the cable. One, two, three, four, plus an extra one just for us to keep. Okay, so that gets the cable loaded up. Uh, we needed a hundred motors, so let's grab a hundred of those. And some more plastic and some more rubber. So load all of that stuff up. All right, now is there anything else that we can do? We could we could try and do this, but I'd have to manually make those, which I can do. But if we go to um, if we go to tier six, see tier six is going to need fifty of those. The jetpack's going to need the packaging thing. The train's going to need a hundred. Yeah, so, yeah, let's just do these two right now. Um, so I think what we have to do is launch this and then quickly switch back to um, the gas mask and launch that as well. Okay, so let's do it. Milestone reached. To here. The manufacturer increases production Act complexity. Activate. A critical look at production line Oh, did they make it so we can't do that anymore? Is recommended during integration. The truck allows for increased efficiency in transportation, automated or otherwise. Yeah, they must have. They New must have um, parts fixed that. Progress to the next phase. Okay, well, serves me right for trying to game the game. <laughs> 
Um, but is the stuff in there, though? I mean, hopefully we didn't lose the stuff. Oh! That was weird. It wasn't it. Milestone reached. Gas masks and filter parts will ensure increased odds of survival in gas-based hazardous environments. Fixit Incorporated would like to extend the friendly advice to not forget to change filters regularly. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that did work. I, I, I don't know what I did wrong there, but it, I, I couldn't get it to, to come up at first. Okay, so this gave us three more inventory slots, and we now should have uh, the ability to make a manufacturer and trucks and computer and start working on our phase three components. That's a beautiful thing. All right, let's come down here and let's go to production and the manufacturer. Okay, so we're going to need to make 10 heavy modular frames just to make that. So we can do that, though, in our inventory, uh, in our uh, do it manually by hand. That's what my mouth is trying to say. My brain's telling my mouth to say. All right, so let's see. Heavy modular frames right here. We only needed five of those. All right, cool. Um, now, oh, sorry, no, we needed 10. My bad. That's done, okay. And uh, we just need to grab five motors. So yeah, I don't I don't know if um, we'll need heavy modular frames enough to warrant a, per, a permanent production line or not. Um, so I guess I'll have to kind of try and figure that out. Uh, but let's put the manufacturer here. This guy's a big machine, and I want to line it up. Will it will control line that up? Yeah, it looks like it does. Let's leave a little bit of room to run through there. That doesn't. It doesn't seem lined up though. I don't think it it's lining up right here. Let's lock it. Yeah, it needs to move back to here. Look at that. Our very first manufacturer. Fantastic. Okay, cool. So yeah, the manufacturer basically is a four input machine and we're gonna need it, you know, to make these things for the space elevator. And we need it for computers, crystal oscillators, and of course, heavy modular frames and a couple other things too. Uh, oh, and for gas filters, right. Beacons, this item will be... Oh, okay, yeah, I think those are gonna be obsoleted so we probably won't worry about it. So to make more modular frames now, we need, or, or heavy modular frames, we need modular frames, steel pipe, encased industrial beams, and screws. Uh, okay, so let's grab this. And we'll put you right here. Okay, so the way we want to hook this up is whatever's furthest down the line in the storage is the first thing we should hook up, which I think is screws. Uh, let's also get these out of the way. No, I take that back. We've got to do it the other way around. Whatever's closest should be the first we hook up. So that's going to be probably encased beams. Yes, encased beams are right here. All right, let's make everything mark three. Now this one should just 
be able to run directly in there. Excellent. Okay. Um, pipes will be the next thing. And that we'll have to bring out this way. Okay, everything's connected up, and that should kick in in just a second as soon as it fills up with screws. There it goes. Very cool. Manufacturer. Just watch the animation here for a second. It doesn't... Um, change based upon what you're building it's all the same thing but it's still kind of cool to look at <laughs> that's cool yep screw that rod in there That gave us two heavy modular frames. So I'm just going to let that uh, make a bunch of those for us. I don't know how many. I mean, well, let's t let's take a look and see what the minimum amount we're going to need is. Uh, so if we go to select milestone, we're going to need 25 for that milestone, and that finishes five tier five for us. We're going to need 50, so 75... 175, uh, uh, 225. Okay, so we need a minimum of 225 to get all of these uh, milestones. Now, um, jetpack and inventory slot, more inventory slots. I think that's the next one I would like to do. So let's just put in, um, what's that? Oh, that's package fuel, right. Okay. Um, I don't think we can make that manually or can we? No, because it needs, it needs the, the fuel, you know, from, um, from the plant. So that means what we really should focus on next is uh, what's the one that gives us oh wait a minute do we already have that the packager that's what we're looking for manufacturer huh logistics mark four trains and pipeline engineering this one yeah this is the one we want okay so let's select that one okay so it needs 3,000 wire 200 plastic 100 motors and 25 of the thingamadoodles 3,000 wire my goodness that's a lot we got it though 1,000 2,000 3,000 um, let's grab some more plastic and rubber. Uh, and we needed motors too. So I think it only needed 50, but I'll grab 100. Let's grab just maybe a couple more stacks of each of these as well. All right. Load all of that in. And then we just need 25 heavy modular frames. Let's see if we've got that many made up yet. <laughs> we only have eight made up. Okay. So, yeah, that's that's kind of damn slow. We could and probably should do this. Where are my... Yeah. Let's just overclock the shit out of this thing. Just like we did with the assembler. Okay, so we just more than doubled the output of that. Very good. All right. Now, um, 
I think I'll just manually craft the the remaining ones. What is that? Oh, those are screws. Just so we can get this thing going here. Grab a couple things of screws. Um, we need modular frames. Grab a couple of those. And, uh, damn it, what was that other thing? Or is that all we needed? Yeah. Well, it's enough for 10, so let's make 10. Let's check this now. We need a total of 25. Hey, look at that. That gives us 25. Beautiful. Perfect timing. So, what I might... Uh, yeah, put that in. Okay, let's launch this. Milestone reached. Fluids can now be packaged to allow for transportation via vehicle and conveyor belts. Additionally, highly improved biofuel can now be produced. I'm curious about that. How we do the... The biofuel. Um... Okay, let's, uh, let's go here. Package liquid biofuel. Because you guys were telling me this is really good for the jetpack. It requires... Oh, how do we make liquid biofuel? Okay, so we need to feed solid biofuel into... And water into a refinery. Uh, there's an alternate recipe that produces... Wait, what? Packaged liquid biofuel and liquid biofuel produces an empty canister? I don't understand. Why would I... Why would I take a canister that already has shit in it to produce an empty one. Unless, oh, maybe unless I want to reclaim that. Maybe that's what it is. Liquid, to reclaim that? And use it for something else? I mean, that's the only thing I can think of off the top of my head. Okay, so... We have two things we can do now. We can either make the liquid biofuel and then package it for our jet pack, which we're going to get next, I think. Or we could uh, we could set up more plastic or rubber and then use the heavy oil residue to make fuel. Or we could just actually no, we don't need to do that. We could just make the fuel straight up, right? We just plop down an oil extractor in a refinery. Here, let's get a refinery down so we can actually look at the options. I'm just kind of trying to figure out what the easiest and quickest thing to do for the nonce until we put something permanent up, you know. Um, let's see, we needed mo some motors, it said. And what else did we need for that? Uh, in case industrial beams. Grab a couple stacks of those. Okay. Let's just plop this down momentarily to look at it. Uh, I'm not obviously not going to keep it here. Alright, so we can make... We could, we, we could tap into another one of those oil nodes and just start making fuel which will give us a byproduct of resin, which can then be used to make residual plastic in another refinery. So that's one option. We can't tap into our heavy oil residue in our current setup because we're using 100% of that. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, you know what? I just remembered something. I underclocked that. Um, 
No, I'm not. Never mind. I underclocked the petroleum coke production, not the heavy oil residue production. So, they, yeah, that's still not an option. Remember, too, guys, this, this is all new territory for me. I've never done anything with oil before in this game. Uh, nor have I really watched anybody else. I mean, I have kind of watched other people, but not not really for the purpose of learning how to do it. Just kind of watching, you know? So, yeah, it's it's new new territory to me. That's what I'm trying to say. But then again, too, you guys said that liquid biofuel is the second best thing for the jetpack. Uh, turbo fuel is the best thing. So to make that, all we need to do is set up a refinery, hook up a water pump, and throw a bunch of solid biofuel into it. And that, I think, would be simpler in the short term anyway. Okay. We might <laughs> we might not get to the build today, but we <laughs> it's coming up, trust me, okay? Um I really, really want to get that jetpack going. Um not just for funsies, but that's important too. But also for practical reasons, you know. Uh what if we did this then? What if we set up all right, what if we put the refinery right here? Um, yeah, with the inputs on this side. And I, th I think what we're going to need to do, at least starting here is ex start extending this way a little more too um yeah let's let's do another tin zoop out this way okay good Um, let's give ourselves a little more space with this. No, it doesn't need to be that tight. Something more like that, I think. All right. Is that lined up with that? More just for aesthetic reasons than practical reasons. Very good. Okay, so these, uh, these are the inputs. So what I'm going to do is... Set that up there and set that up like so. And let's take all of this out of here. Left some in the belt there. We're going to switch this over to solid biofuel. Right, because that's what that—that's what this takes is solid biofuel. Let me double check. We want to make liquid biofuel. Yeah, solid, 90 per minute. Okay. For this particular setup, I'm not really worried about flow rate or anything like that. I just want to make it, you know. All right, so we'll add all of that into there. And do I have? Um, I don't have any left over, but I do have some wood that I can convert into normal bio uh, or biomass later if I need it for other things like um, you know making more cloth or something like that though we have quite a bit of cloth okay so what that's gonna do is that's gonna make the biofuel all right let's come over to here and then uh, yeah go back to raise that up to Looks good. Okay, so that'll start feeding the biofuel into here. Uh, now what we need to do is get water going. Um, just trying to think how I want to do that. 
We got plenty of water available. It's just a matter of routing it neatly. Let's try something here. Let's remove that. Okay, that did, does fit in there. I'll just line it up right on this line here. And... No, I, I mean, it, it's letting me put it in there, but it's not actually fitting nicely in there. Maybe we'll do like this. There we go. Okay. We can't quite line it up on that line, so we'll line it up on this center here. And to really make sure it's lined up, we will grab one of these thingies. And we should be able to use control. Oh, actually, you know what, though? I'm trying to get on top of this. Can I stand on top of this? Yeah. Okay. Control's not lining that up with this. Okay, well, in that case, let's just use the line on the foundation here. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, we don't want it to be an eyesore either. Them's the rules. Alright, so we don't need that, and we don't need that. And we don't need this. That's the beauty of building over the sea. Instant water access. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm going to allow that. <laughs> uh, okay, so, good. Now, what we want to do is let's put down a this and let's move it out let's move it to the center of this and then back to all right and then hook that right into there now if we hook this into here it's not going to give me a line is it okay that's fine though because we already know that well, we can do it this way, too. Now, I can just do this, but I'd actually like to go up in the air. So that way we can go underneath it. So to do that, we're going to grab another one of these. We're going to pull it out. Let's just pull it out to the edge of the road and let's raise those up. Like so. There we go. I'm not worried about this being a, a 90. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's still nice and neat. It's not an eyesore and it's temporary. I, at least I think it's temporary. <laughs> okay, good. Now you're going to output 120 water per minute. You're only going to need 45 per minute. But again, I'm not really too worried about that. I mean, we could we could underclock this. We can control this. The other one's a little harder to control because it's not a constant supply. But yeah, we can certainly control this one. 
All right, now what I'm going to do for power is let's tap into, we don't need that there at all. Let's bring power back to right on, say, this line here. And then put that there, that there, and that there. All right, so this should start pumping water into here. And uh, as soon as we get that in there, this thing will start making liquid biofuel. Oh, you know what, though? We're not done. We, we need a packager plant to actually output it to. Right, okay, so. Um, packager. Turn that like so. Bring it forward till it touches, and then let's actually just bring it back to about there. So it's not jammed all the way up in there. Uh, those are the inputs. Okay. If we. Yeah, let's just do that. Again, not worried about it being a 90 for this particular scenario but you also okay hold on package liquid biofuel there we go oh we need we need empty canisters that makes sense so how the fuck do we make those <laughs> Empty canister. Oh, and the constructor. Okay. And I, re I suppose it takes probably iron, right? As the input? No, it takes plastic as input. It just tells me right there. Duh. Yeah, I think that's what I, we were looking at earlier. I think that's the whole idea is to reclaim the package. Okay, so... I'm just trying to think how I want to do this. Um, we're going to need this regardless, so let's set it down. Uh, right there is good. Nope. Okay, so we got to get plastic into this input. Let's just bring that out to there. Um, I'm just trying to decide if I want to try and hook up our plastic. We could also put a splitter on this line for now. Well, no, that's not going to work because that's Unless we do a smart splitter. It would also pick up the rubber. That's too much fucking around. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Is we're gonna we're gonna run this out here. Oh my god, that's got to go all the way around here, huh? I mean, I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't planning for this, right? Obviously. Um No, it's got to come to here. Got to come to the center of this. And then back to Okay, and it comes to here. And then I think that's what we want right there. 
Is it straight though? Can't tell. Oh no, that's that's too close. Let's bring it back too. That's what we want. Okay. There we go. Okay. I mean, this this is this is jank, but it's also temporary. Uh, we just want to build up a a supply of liquid biofuel for our jetpack. Oh yeah. I guess if we want this to work, we should put some power on it. What do you think? That's a good idea. I think that's a good idea. All right, good. So it's taking in the liquid biofuel. Um, no, 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 no. I'm still, <laughs> I still left out a. Wait a minute, no. That should work, right? No, 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 no. We got to make the canisters and feed the canisters into here. Oh, for goodness sakes! You're killing me. I kill me. Okay. So that being the case, what we'll do is let's remove those so they're not stuck there. I'll get it right. It might take me 10 million years, but I'll get it right. Have no fear that I'll get it right. What I'm going to do is actually bring this to here so we can go to there. Now we need a constructor. Line it up on here. Are you... Oh, it's not even registering that that's there. To here, back to, and then in. All right, now we got this. Let's go ahead. Uh, there's our insulator right there. Uh, except for it's going to probably hit the indicator light if we put it right on the line, so. You make empty canister. There we go. There's our fuel canisters. Look at that. Awesome. Hot damn. Okay. So I'm just going to let this run for a while and build that up. Um... And we might, I, I might set up something that's semi, per, uh, that's permanent and semi automated. But, you know, that I'll have to kind of figure out how and when and where I'm going to do that. But for now, we'll just, we'll just let this run for a while and, you know, build up a bunch of fuel. Okay. Wow. It's, this is one of those things where it's like, you know what? We're going <laughs> to. All right, we're, we're gonna finish building our building, but I'm just gonna do a couple real quick things first before we get started and like we're already 49 minutes into this episode. That's just insane. Oh Jeez can't take me anywhere. Okay. It's good stuff though. It's fun stuff. All right. This is what we want man This is what we want 50 packaged fuel. Oh shit. Does it have to be Actual fuel. I wonder if we could substitute biofuel for that liquid biofuel. I I don't know uh, if it doesn't, we're going to have to set up a, a temporary thingy for that, too. My guess is it's not going to let me do that. There's one way to find out, though. Nope. Okay, so that means we do indeed have to make normal package fuel. Uh, at least 50. That doesn't require it. That doesn't require it. And neither does that. So, we're, so we're, we just need it for this. 
if we residual fuel you know what we could do we could temporarily switch our petroleum coke machines over to residual fuel just enough to get 50 and and even if it brings down that other little power plant for you know a little while that's not not a problem because it's way you know we have a ton of extra power okay so here's what we're gonna do we are going to grab ourselves 50 of these So I'm just going to temporarily tap into the line here. I don't even care that that's straight because this is super, super temporary. Just enough to get 50. Okay, good. That gives us 50 of those. Okay, take that down and then that's back to making liquid biofuel just take one stack of those for the moment okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run down to our refineries that are making petroleum coke making sure oh it's nice to have those extra slots too uh, I got I just want to make sure I've got all this stuff before we go down there and find out I'm out of something that I need it look uh, at a glance anyways it looks like we do okay so let's drive down there See, the other thing, too, about having the jetpack is it's going to make finishing our factory building a little easier, too. Because I won't have to use towers and ladders and climb up on shit to see up high. Okay, so let's see here. What we want to do is we want to... We're going to need another package machine. So we should be able to hook into this and come out to here and then come around to here. Let's say right about there. Uh, okay, let's grab a packager. Turn it that way and make sure it's lined up this way. Weird that it's not registering that it's pumping into that. Now let's do packaged fuel and we'll just load the canisters directly in there. Like so. Right, okay. That could go in there. Let's grab some power temporarily off of here. Okay, so all we should have to do now is just switch the recipe on this to residu uh, residual fuel. And we only have to do this for less than two minutes. Okay, why am I not getting fuel in there? Does it really have to be fuel fuel and not residual fuel? That's just fuel fuel. Alright, what the hell, man? Why isn't that working? It's powered on. It's set to package fuel. We've got 
fuel because the recipe is called residual fuel. It's not. It's still fuel, you know, once it's made. Let's reconnect this. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. That's, yeah, that's the input. What the hell am I missing now? We've got canisters. It's probably something really obvious and really stupid. Oh! Now it's working. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand. It's working now, though. That's all that we care about. Okay. That was just really bizarre. I'm sure there's a reason for it. And if you guys know the reason... Let me know in the comments, just for my own edification, but it's like, I, I don't know. I don't get it. Something seemed to just be, you know, like it took a second for it to realize what it needed to do or something. I don't know. It's bizarre. All right. We got all the fuel. Let's pull that out of there. We'll pull the other canister out. And we are done with this setup. Um, One thing I want to consider, though, is... Let's set this back to uh, petroleum coke. Uh, and it even kept the overclock rate. Look at that. How about that? Um, one thing we could do, actually, is we could set... We could set this machine back to 120 per minute. And if we take eight, or no, if we take 120 and divide that by eight, that would be 15. We could then underclock all of these guys to take in 15 per minute and then have this guy just make fuel for us I like that idea um, the only thing is is it's not that simple because we also need to get uh, we also need to be you know make containers if we want to automate it right so to do that we could put a splitter on one of these, probably on this, we could put a splitter on this plastic line and divert half of it to a constructor to make the containers. All right, so um, I, I looked this up and what I found out in update eight is that you can use solid biofuel normal fuel, liquid biofuel, and turbo fuel. Turbo fuel is the best, and it also provides the the fastest speed and boost. Um, normal package fuel is like just the middle of the road. Liquid biofuel is maybe a little slower in terms of acceleration than normal fuel but it's but it burns longer so you can hover uh, or fly longer and i think because of that people are generally you know the general consensus is that liquid biofuel is better than normal liquid fuel and then solid biofuel even though it works is is the worst because it burns up the, the fastest okay so that being the case i think what we'll do is um I think we'll just leave this the way that it is and you know I'll I'll make a batch of liquid biofuel and see how long it lasts I mean if if it doesn't last very long at all then it might be worth it to you know to set up normal package fuel so that way we can fully automate it and then we just have an endless supply 
But if it lasts a decent amount of time, you know, um, then it might be worth just making it manually, making a big batch, and then when that batch runs out, make another batch manually, etc. So I think that's what we'll do. All right, so let's see how much we have made here. Why are we stopped? That's not powered up. Why is that not powered up? Oh, because we ran out of biofuel, right. This isn't a fully automated operation. All right, so yeah, let's just... Let's just see how far we can get on this amount here. So basically we have three stacks and, and then some. And, you know, I'll just have to, you know, kind of gauge whether or not I think it's worth it to manually make biofuel or just have an endless supply of normal fuel, which won't last quite as long. Anyway, let's put that in there. Uh, looks like we need... Another motor. And here we go. Let's get ourselves a jetpack, ladies and gentlemen. R&D inflated your pocket dimension and has provided a jetpack, which operates on oil-based fuel for increased navigational capabilities as well as odds of survival. Hmm. It said oil-based fuel. So I wonder if that... Uh, and I think that's in... in before update 8, I think that was the only type of fuel. So they must have just forgot to update that little spiel there. Alright, so what do we need to make a jetpack? That's actually going to be made over here because that's equipment, not parts. Jetpack. We need 15 circuit boards. Guess what we have saved up from all of the hard drives we've been going after. Circuit boards. Look at that. Okay. Huzzah! Alright. Put that on our back. Uh, oh, we can... Oh, that's kind of cool. We can tell it a preferred fuel. Okay. Package liquid biofuel. Oh, look at this, you guys. This is nice. It seems like it takes a fairly... Oh, hold on a second. I guess I, I'm still actually in fly mode. Let's turn that off so it doesn't interfere with this. Alright, so... Once this runs out, does it not... Do I have to land, or does it just kick in another thing of fuel? Oh. Oh, that sucks. Okay, so you have to wait for it to recharge. Why? <laughs> I can't it just take another one in. Oh, that sucks. Weird. Okay, I don't like that. I mean, it's still super useful, but... We're gonna... You know, I, I mean, we're not really in any danger because we have our parachute if, if we fall. I just forgot to activate it because I'm trying to figure this out. But that doesn't seem like... Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. You know what? That took the place of our parachute, didn't it? Oh, shit. Whoa. What are you... Wait, stop! I'm not doing this! How do I deactivate it? Oh, okay. Right, because this... This takes our back slot. Can you quickly switch out? your parachute if you're falling all right we're gonna do we're gonna do a little test here this is kind of cool though i gotta say 
I like it. It is going to be make precision building a little bit hard though, but I think later on we we get a a hover the ability to hover. Um and I don't know if that's just like an add-on to the jetpack or if it's um you know, a different thingy altogether. But here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go as high up as we can. And then when we start to fall, I'm going to see if I can switch to my parachute. Here, actually, even before we do that, I'm going to try something else here. If... No, we can't assign... Can we... Ass yeah, we can't assign keyboard shortcuts to these. Because, look, my, when, when I open this... The toolbar disappears. We can only assign it to items. I don't know why that is. Um, that just seems odd that we can't assign equipment to a keyboard shortcut. Okay. Anyway, let's try our test. So we're just going to go up as high as we can. gives us a little warning okay now can I quickly put this in I can okay I mean you got to be pretty fast about it but it is doable <laughs> it would be so much easier if we could just assign a hotkey to that though you know hmm are are there mods I'll bet you there's a mod or 10 out there that allow you to do just that it just doesn't make sense why we couldn't. And, you know, I'm always futzing around with my mouse wheel trying to get the right thing out, too. Here, let, let's try something else, just for funsies here. Put this back in. All right, I'm going to get my stopwatch out here. Okay. So... Let's go ahead and go now. And I'm just going to time and see how long. Oh, wow. Okay. That ran out. That that started that used the normal fuel. Um the solid biofuel lasts way longer than normal. Fuel. I don't even need to time it. You can tell. Jeez. Yeah, look look how fast that's running out. Compared to this. I mean, without timing it, I would say the solid biofuel is three to four times longer. Why... Let's just, let's go ahead and time it. Why not? Right? Okay, here we go. Okay, so about 12 seconds. We had about 12 seconds of, of fuel on that charge. All right, now let's switch back to normal fuel. And I'm just going to count. Here we go. One banana, two banana, three banana, four banana, five banana. Okay, so the so the uh, liquid biofuel is over twice as long. It's maybe, you know, another 230% longer. Just rough guess without doing the actual math. But it's, it's very obvious that... <laughs> <laughs> that the liquid biofuel is better in terms of duration. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, I wonder if... I wonder how that would apply to a vehicle. That could be an interesting test, too. All right, so we'll set this down with the wheels right on the line. And we'll load up one normal fuel. We'll let it coast all the way to a stop. 
Okay, so the front wheels basically got to the to the first stripe here. Uh, you know what else? Well, here, let's just do this. Let's just put let's just put that there as the marker, and then what we'll do is we'll use the other lane for the second test. Okay, so we'll get that guy right on the line. Um, and I just want one of these. Okay. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so it looks like the liquid biofuel is less efficient in a vehicle, or at least in the Explorer, than normal fuel. But in the jetpack, it's superior. I want to try one other test here, because this has really got me curious. Okay, so we just know that this marker is normal fuel. This marker is liquid biofuel. I want to see what it does on one piece of solid biofuel and one piece of coal. See what happens. Okay, so that's solid biofuel right there. Didn't get very far. That was kind of what I was expecting. And then we'll try coal. One piece of coal. Put the one piece of coal in. Let's go. Oh, that, Jesus, that's even worse than solid biofuel. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Four vehicles. I'm going to assume this applies to the tractor and the truck and all that, too. Maybe it doesn't. But at least for in the Explorer, we'll say. Your worst fuel is coal. Your second to the worst fuel is solid biofuel. Your third to the worst fuel is liquid biofuel. And your best fuel is normal packaged fuel for vehicles. But these two, you switch around for the jetpack. For the jetpack, I mean, when you're comparing... When you're comparing the two, uh, it's the solid biofuel that's better. Well, it's it's actually the turbo fuel that's the best, but um, you know we don't have access to that right at the moment. So I wonder though if the turbo fuel lasts as long as the solid biofuel. Maybe it's faster, but it doesn't last as long. We'll have to test that once we can make turbo fuel. So maybe we'll do another little test there. All right, you guys. Well, um, now that I know that. It might not be a bad idea for me to go ahead and set up a, a packaged fuel, a permanent packaged fuel down there. Pretty much we'll do the same thing that we did, that I just did earlier, except for that I'll put a splitter on the plastic line and divert uh, the, you know, some of the plastic to that. And, um, and we'll just start making, it'll slow, you know, it'll slow this down, but this is for my manual use anyways, or for temporary setup, so I don't think that'll be a problem. And then, you know, that way we have normal fuel to use in our vehicles. And also, you know, if, if we had to, we could use it temporarily in the jetpack until I can make some more packaged liquid biofuel. So I think that's what I'm going to do. All right. Well, this was a fun episode. We completely did not do <laughs> what I had planned, but it was still a fun episode, and it was cool that we finally got the jetpack. Uh, and, you know, we got the uh, manufacturer, and we got the packager, and all that cool stuff. Uh, as far as milestones go, we also finished Tier 5, too. Yeah, yes. Look at us, man. We're rocking and rolling now. Um, Logistics Mark 4 will give us the fuel generator. This will give us the train, and this will give us the better pipelines. Um, you, we can do... Well, no, I'm going to have to make... Fit, well, no, we've been making those. Never mind. Okay, so we should have a bunch of those made up already. Uh, and I happen to have computers in here from hard drive sites. So why don't we go ahead and... 
Oh, though, we need a hundred of those bastards, though, don't we? Well, this one we can do right now. Okay, so let's throw the plastic in. The rubber. Those and those. And I just need to go grab a few more of those things. So let's get this one knocked out and then I'll... Uh, where's my copper sheeting? It should be over here. I don't remember how many more of those I needed. Okay, so we need plastic, rubber, and the heavy modular frames. And then we just need the heavy modular frames. Oh, we still need more copper sheeting. My goodness. I suppose I should actually count the numbers, huh? I just assumed that I grabbed enough. There we go. Okay, so that gives us Mark II pipes, so they can handle 600. Milestone reached. Improved pipelines and pumps can now be constructed, capable of handling increased throughput of any fluid, as well as providing increased pressure handling for better vertical transport, respectively. Nice, okay. So yeah, basically doubles the capacity of the pipes. Um, okay, we'll do this one next. Um, but I'm going to have to make the computers, which I should be able to do in the manufacturer. Um, or, can I make those in here? Uh, yes, I can make them in here. What is this? Oh, those are screws. Circuit boards are, are going to be the, the thing we're not going to have. Uh, in quantity. Uh, what do we need to make circuit boards? Oh, just copper sheeting and plastic. Okay. So that means those are probably made in an assembler. So I could set up this assembler over here to make us um, enough circuit boards to make enough computers in order to yeah in order to then finish that milestone so i will work on that off camera and when we come back in the next episode the plan will be to get logistics mark four done um yeah i'm gonna have to make enough computers to do both tr well shit you know we could do this one right now actually why not? Let's do it. Get into... Get into trains, man. Um, I got too much shit in my inventory. Alright, well, anyway, I, I'm just gonna... All I'm gonna do is... Is get the trains. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything with them right now, but I'm, I'm gonna get them just because I have everything I need. And then I will build enough computers, circuit boards and then computers, to get Logistics Mark IV. Not only will the, get that give us the F Mark IV belt, which is 480 resources, and the lift, but it also then gives us the fuel generator, and then we'll start looking at, um, you know, potentially using these to set up even more power. Um, so that is the plan. And then, you know, the main goal for the next episode, I'm not going to promise this to you because you know how I am. <laughs> you know how things go. But the intent for the next episode will be to actually finish building out our... Oh, it's using um, solid biofuel. Uh, finished building out our building here uh, with liquid biofuel in our jetpack so we have maximum time in the air. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.